Hey, in this video, I'm going to share with you how variables work in Makefiles. Sounds like an easy topic, but it's actually pretty complex. It can be a bit messy sometimes. So I have a Makefile right here. It does some simple stuff, right? I have main, I have a run, I have a clean. That all makes sense. Variables, I think, are where it gets interesting. So here I'm going to define a variable foo one equals world. If I want to put a dollar sign in foo, then I need to actually double delimit it like this. Uh, and let me show you why. I do make test one. You can see that our foo two, which is one two, the dollar sign was extracted out. And that's because a dollar sign is used to put in another variable, right? So if you actually want to put in a dollar sign, you just have to double it up. And yeah, if you want to print out a variable in a string, you can use this syntax. You can also use braces, like curly braces. So that's the, the simplest form of variable assignment. Next, if you want to do a list, you do it like this. Space delimited list. One, two, three. So now my objects here is equal to that list. And then I can use that wherever I want to, right? So here I have a target, uh, targeting combined.md. And my prereqs, I'm actually just using this list. So it's equivalent of listing the uh, same here, where I want to cat all those into a file. Combined, I can just refer to them there. Uh, you can see these here, by the way. So I, the goal is I have these three files. And whenever they change, I want to rewrite this combined. But the cool thing is there's a third place you can use these variables, which is here uh, on the target name side. Right? So now this target name side is actually going to be this list. So that is how you use list in makefile variables. You just list them, they're just space delimited and you can use them anywhere uh, you please. Uh, recursive assignment is where things get a little bit more complex. So here we have bar, we're gonna assign it to hello Baz, but Baz isn't actually defined until afterwards. So how's that gonna work? What's gonna happen? Uh, well, we can test that out because I put together a test, right? And we could see hello world is actually what bar equals. And that may be a little bit confusing at first, but when in a makefile you use the equal sign, they call that a recursive assignment. And it's actually more easier to think of it as like a lazy assignment. So uh, when bar is assigned to hello baz, it's not actually expanded at that time. It's actually when you use it down here. So at this point, when I go expand this, then bar is expanded to hello baz and baz is expanded to the value of baz, which is at this time world. So it's working backwards lazily. And it's called recursive assignment because it can keep on expanding like that, right? And that's why we also see here with our quux case, quux equal to baz, uh, then we set it to hello, and then we override that. And what we get as a result is hello make, right down here, because when this expands, it is down here, right? We're expanding it here, going back up. And at that point, the, the value is make, which, you know, makes a... Some things easy, it makes some other things hard. Here's one of the things it makes hard. I have this value, corgi or whatever, we set it equal to start, and then we wanna append on the end. So we say it's equal to itself plus and more, right? And normally you'd expect that to be an append, but if now we run this, we see recursive variable references itself. So that's because the expansion uh, that happens here goes back up and expands this to equal this, which contains itself. And the value of itself is, is now also equal to this, so it, it loops. It's not like this base case exists because it's been overridden by this, and so you get a loop. So you can't do that. That is one of the hiccups of recursive assignment. But the creators of Make have thought this through. So to overcome this problem, uh, they have simple assignment. Simple assignment works like you might expect, it expands it at the time. So here, if I say bar one, uh, hello baz one, but I'm using the colon, which is simple assignment and world, what will I get? So we can test that out down here in our thing, test three. And we can see now that we just get hello. That's because it's not an error to use a variable that hasn't been defined. A variable that hasn't been defined is just equal to blank, right? So at the time of this being defined, this isn't defined, so we get blank. And same here, you can see this make does not override this value here. It's expanded right at this point, and that's why we get hello world. And because of that, we can do this kind of appending here, and it doesn't cause a loop. So that is simple expansion. 
Of course, if we actually want to append something onto a string, instead of just using it as an example to show how the execution order works, we have the plus equals. So this works either way. So here we have a recursive assignment and we're gonna add world on the end, or we have a simple assignment and we can add world on the end. And if we run that, it works. So that is simple. If you actually wanna append something, do things that way. Um, but what happens if I uncomment these lines? Right, so here we're echoing foo and bar four. We set their values equal to hello world here, but then below them, we set them equal to more. So what should that do? What should that do? It prints more. And the reason that this happens, the way I think about it conceptually, is that the whole file is evaluated line by line, right? And then once you get your target name run, then it's gonna go inside of the recipe, right? This is the recipe section after the colon. So these steps actually did happen before we got into these and they overrode the values. And you can see it doesn't matter if we use the recursive assignment or we use the simple assignment. In either case, it's gonna override them. So next after that uh, is conditional assignment. So conditional assignment is great when you have a value and you're not sure whether it's set or not. So you want to override it, but only if it's equal to nothing. So here's how this will work. We have foo5 and we're gonna set it equal to make if it's not already been set. And then a bar which hasn't been set will be set to this value. So this is how this works, right? Works exactly like you'd expect. You just use the question mark there and it will only assign if the value's changed. Target specific bars. This comes up quite a bit. I have test six and test six is a prerequisite for test six A and test six B. Uh, in the real world, this probably does something using the foo six var. In this case, all it's gonna do is echo it. But I need to change what test six does based on the prerequisite it happens from. Maybe a bit contrived, but this does happen. So the way I can do that is put the target name and then the assignment here, right? Target name and assignment. So by default, foo6 is equal to hello, but inside 6a, it's equal to sub. And so we can test this out. So if we run test 6a, we get sub right here. But if we run it test 6b, and we get hey. And if we just run test six, then we get hello. All right, the environment. Oftentimes in your makefile, you may want to make use of a, you know, an environmental variable that's coming in from the shell. Super easy to do. They're all accessible just like this. So this can get me my username if I run make test seven. Also, these variables that are set here can be overridden. So I can say foo seven equals two x. I can say bar seven is equal to T. And that way I can do things like specify different compiler flags or, or so on, uh, which we'll get to in a little bit. Next type of variables, magic variables. Uh, that's what I'm calling them. They're actually called special variables. So here we have test eight as two prereqs, prereq one and prereq two. For some reason, we might want to debug what's happening in our build. We might want to know what is causing a prereq to fire, what order they're happening in etc. That's where we can use some of these variables. So this will give you the actual target name of what we're running, which you can see down here is test eight. If you would like to get the first prereq, dollar sign less than, can give you that, which in our case is prereq one. If we want to get the ones that have changed, we can use this. So put out the whole list of all the ones that changed that are prereqs. Um, and then dollar sign uh, hat here will give us all of them. All right, wildcards and shells are sometimes where, where things get a little bit more complex. So here I have list one, which is equal to text slash star.md. So we're referring to my three markdown files here. An important thing to understand is this is just a string containing this. This glob is not actually being expanded here. If I call a command that then expands it, that's, that's different, but it's not actually being expanded. If I want to expand it, then I need to use this wildcard command, which I'll, I'll do there. Let me just show you how these work. I'm gonna comment these two out and then I'm gonna run my test. You can see list one is just equal to the string text star.md where list two is actually expanded. So this can still work. Like if you're passing this to a command like remove that understands to expand globs, it can work fine. But be aware that make is not expanding it, right? To expand it, we need to use the wildcard. There's of course another way to expand it, which is using a shell. 
So in list three here, what I'm doing is actually launching a shell and in that shell running ls text.star.md, right? Which I can do like this, right? And we can see it also gets the pattern. List four, uh, I find this one super confusing, but the shorthand for the shell expansion is this, bang equals. It looks a lot like not equals in some programming languages, but this is actually a bang equals uh, where bang is execute. So that will give us the same result. So, oh, you know what? It's interesting because I believe to make that work, there we go. To make that work, you need a, a version of make that is at least 4.2. Um, so that's why I have to run gmake here on my Mac where the make is ancient, something to keep in mind. So yeah, wildcards uh, can be tricky. Just remember they don't necessarily get expanded unless you're doing something like a, a bang assignment or using a shell or a wildcard. Standard flag. So make has a bunch of flags that are built in. You can look at uh, the make manual and see what they are. A lot of them are, are C and C++ compile flags. So if you're looking at a make compilation earlier, I did this, right? But the standard way you'll see GCC being invoked is going to often be a little bit different. They will, rather than hard code the GCC compiler, they'll use this flag, CC, and for passing flags to it, they will use the C flag, right? And then instead of above, you can call it something like this. And this makes it easier to, to make it run on different environments. I could pass in a different value of CC, or I could pass in a different flag if I, if I wanted a different compiler flag. There are a whole bunch of these. These are the most commonly uh, seen C compile ones. There's also ones for C++, like here we're doing G++, and we're using wall. You can also see what the flags are by using this make flags flag, like this. See now there are no flags set, but if I run it like that, I can see that the C flags has been set to uh, warn on all errors. Interesting quirk of flags is that you can imagine having a large project where you have a top level make file that mainly calls other make files recursively into subfolders. And for that reason, uh, you might build it like this, uh, change the subdirectory and then call make within it. And when you do that, the flags get passed down, which makes a lot of sense. If I want to warn on all errors at this top level, I want that to cascade down. If you like make files, uh, but sometimes they become a little bit hairy, you might like earth files. Here is my earth file for the same project, except with all the, the variable madness. Um, you can see up here the syntax much like a docker file. I'm picking a base image which has all my dependencies installed, which means that when I run this build, it doesn't matter if it's on my local machine or somebody else's Mac, Windows, CI. It's going to run the same because it's always running inside the set container. Then I give targets like I did before. So the combined step that we previously talked about um, where I'm joining these files, what I'm doing here is I'm just copying in the text files, and then I'm running my cat into this combined file, and then at the end, I'm saving it back out. So the earth file, you always copy in the things you're going to perform things on, do whatever you're going to do, and then push them back out. Uh, the syntax is, is basically bash syntax, except you have some special commands like copy and save artifact, but a run is, is like running a bash command inside of a Docker file. So that's the combined. Then we have the build. You can see here for the build, I'm copying my source files, I'm running GCC, and then I'm saving that result back out. And for all, I, I just call both of them, build and combine. So that's an earth file. It, you know, it's a nice step up from a make file in my mind. If you've ever used a Docker file and a make file together, where you use the make file to call the Docker file, or you copy a make file inside the Docker file and then run it, this is just a simple way to do that. It's open source. You can use it. Uh, it works great. I'm a little bit biased because I work for Earthly. But anyhow, that is make file variables. Here's my cheat sheet. You can see recursive assignment, simple assignment, lists are space delimited, shells like this or bang assignment, conditional is with a question mark. Target starts like that. If you're looking to learn more about building things, subscribe to the channel. If, if there's videos you'd like to see about software development, let me know. If you want to learn more about Earthly, check out the link. And if you have other things you want to see about Make Files or Ninja or CMake or any software development topic, not just builds, please let me know. Thank you.